welcome back to another video if you're new to my channel hello and welcome here my name is Nosa thank you for joining us today so in this video we want to focus on the mistakes that you may be making when tracking your ovulation and I'm going to be speaking from my experience I started tracking my fertile window my fertility actually after I had my first child because that was the method of contraception or contraceptive that that we wanted to use so um, I started tracking but I can tell you guys for over a year I honestly didn't know what I was doing okay I didn't even have all the right you know the right tools I just had some apps I downloaded some apps and that was it I was just relying on the apps to, to tell me when when I was fertile and when I was not but after I had my second child I decided to take things more seriously you know started reading about it and realized that there were a whole lot of tools out there resources out there that could help me understand my fertility study my body and of course know when you know when I'm ovulating and you know sense of ovulation and all of that so today I'm gonna to share with you guys some mistakes that I made which I am very sure you may be making right now in terms of tracking your fertility your ovulation and whether you're trying to conceive or trying to avoid pregnancy these are some things that you should be aware of to get the most accurate results so the first mistake is relying on the calendar method the calendar method to arrive at your ovulation now the calendar method is very simple very basic you know to understand and i've made several videos on this it is simply subtracting some numbers to arrive at your ovulation day so if you have a 28 day cycle what you what you want to do is to subtract 14 and the answer will be 14 which will be your estimated ovulation day now if that is your only way of arriving at your your ovulation period then you are making a big mistake the reason is that our bodies are different every woman's cycle is unique and different some women have long cycles some have short cycles some have regular irregular or a varying cycle length and even if you have a 28 day cycle your, your period always comes after every 28 days it doesn't mean that you always ovulate on the 14th day because you know there are several things that can affect our bodies our hormones can react differently maybe your diet your lifestyle stress the weather so many things can you know can affect our bodies and throw our hormones off balance so if you are solely relying on the calendar method if you have done the math and you have that day cycled on your calendar as that is my ovulation day that is a period i will be trying to get that is a day i'll be trying to get pregnant or avoid getting pregnant then you are making a big mistake there are some other things that you need to know to put together to arrive at your fertile window or your most fertile period so that is the first one relying on the calendar method doing the math and just having that date in your head as my ovulation day that is that is absolutely wrong another very common mistake is missing your fertile window if you watch any of my ovulation videos i always stress that fertile period your fertile window because it is very important in your fertility it is just as important as your ovulation day so according to researches a woman is mostly fertile in the days leading up to her ovulation day yes ovulation only happens once that egg is going to be released only just once throughout your fertile period and once that egg is released it has about 24 hours to stay alive and after that it is gone but if you are tracking your ovulation if you are tracking your fertility uh, maybe with your cervical mucus or with some ovulation test kit or with your temperature then you'll be able to see the patterns you will, you will be able to see your luteinizing hormone rising rising and rising and once you get to your peak once you arrive at your peak then you know that ovulation is happening within the next couple of hours or days Days. another thing is sperm is able to stay in a woman's body for at least three to five days so if you are trying to conceive and you already have your ovulation date mark on your calendar and you decide not to do anything not to have sex or be intimate before that day then that is a big mistake so it is very important for you to track your fertility to know your LH patterns you know to study your body and all the signs of ovulation and of course consider those days consider your fertile days just as important as your ovulation day another mistake which i know a lot of you ladies are making is not giving yourself enough time to study your ovulation patterns not being patient with the process the process of understanding your fertility so i know i have made several videos here you know demonstrating showing to you guys how to calculate your ovulation how to test for ovulation how to use a, a temperature and all of that and all of that from the comment section i can see that a lot of you are in a hurry so you go to the store you get yourself the ovulation test kit you test just once 
you do the test just one in one cycle and then you rush back to me and start telling me i got a smiley face i got a positive so what do i do when do i have sex now and all of that and i'm like this is the first time the first and only time that you have ever done this you need to give yourself some time you need to i mean like i said when i first started testing for ovulation I didn't understand anything the symbols you know i i could not i could not really understand but after about three to four months you know i knew everything and that was why i was able to make a video about it so you need to give yourself some time to study your lh patterns if you are testing for ovulation if you are, if you are using some ovulation test kit when do you notice that your your luteinizing hormones start rising when do you arrive at your peak if you are using a digital test kit and you got a smiley when exactly did you get that smiley how many smileys did you get a smiley face does not always mean you are ovulating it could be that you have your peak or you have a high so when you see two smileys three smileys and then you are confused am i ovulating three times in a row no how many positive did you get how many of our positive ovulation tests result did you get that is how to track your LH patterns, your luteinizing hormone. You see how from when it starts rising and when it gets to its peak and when it starts coming back down. If you are using a thermometer, when do you notice that your temperature starts to rise? And when do you have that dip? And then when does it go back up again? I have a video on this if you don't understand what I'm saying. If you are using your cervical mucus, when do you notice that you start producing that, the right type of cervical mucus? When do you see that happening? How often, how much is coming out? is it close to your ovulation date the day you have marked in your calendar when exactly do you experience this throughout three cycles you need at least two to three cycles to master this once you have that then you can confidently start trying if you are trying to conceive so the right way to track your ovulation is to actually take some time to study your fertility once you know that then you are increasing your chances of conceiving another one is rely completely on your ovulation tracker apps I know a lot of you may be making this mistake i was very guilty of this before like i said after i had my first you know using these apps were my only means of contraceptive okay i would just go to the app and see when is my next period okay when is my next ovulation okay and that was the only thing we we're using to avoid pregnancy until we found out surprisingly that we we're pregnant with number two now don't get me wrong ovulation tracker apps are great they can help to track your fertility track your ovulation uh you know keep a record of your information even give some tips you know like health tips uh, for women but you also have to understand that they are computers these apps are computers they only give you information based on what you feed into them if you tell an app that you have a 28 day cycle that app will tell you that your ovulation day will be on day 14. but guess what it doesn't always happen like that so at the end of the day you still have to pay attention you have to pay attention to your body like right now since after having three kids i can tell you guys that my, my cycle is just you know not as consistent as it was before i started having kids and all my apps let me tell you these apps are mostly accurate okay they are 90 plus percent accurate and every time they tell me hey your next period is coming on these dates guess what sometimes my period my period would have already started or you know my period would not show up until days after that prediction but i don't blame the apps because it is based on the information that i have been feeding it so i always have to go there to update the app so you cannot completely rely on this ovulation tracker apps it is still up to you to take charge of your fertility to study and understand your cycle and your fertility and of course you know let the apps know so that they can all update the information that they provide to you another mistake is not testing enough if you are someone that uses ovulation test kits to track your ovulation and you are not testing enough if you are waiting just waiting on, until you start experiencing ovulation symptoms in your body or maybe you know you start producing cervical mucus before you start testing you are making a big mistake I can tell you from my experience that there have been times like you know one or two cycles where I did not experience anything I did not experience any sense of ovulation in my body but I still ovulated when I tested so according to experts it is it is required or recommended to test at least 10 to 20 times throughout your 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 fertile period and you want to start testing on the day after your period ends if your period ends on Monday you want to start testing from Tuesday and continue until you see your ovulation and ovulation passes if, ovula if you think you have ovulated don't stop testing continue until that luteinizing hormone disappears completely until you start getting negative results okay and if you have irregular cycles that means you know you are going to need more of this 
more of these both the digital and the you know the regular ones to test often so you can start testing once a day just once a day from after your period ends and once you notice that your luteinizing hormone is rising then you can increase it you can increase your testing to two or three or even four times a day i do have a video on this okay you can watch that video to see how to test for ovulation so that's another mistake not testing enough waiting to see signs of ovulation before you start testing that is absolutely wrong and the last on my list is testing at the wrong time so it is possible to get some false positives or false negative when you do an ovulation test you can get a positive but you are actually not ovulating you can get a negative but you are you are actually ovulating an ovulation test is different from pregnancy tests okay a pregnant it is done at different times of the day a pregnancy test you want to test first thing in the morning or the first urine of the day but for ovulation you don't need your first urine of the day to test for most women lh levels rise in the morning but this surge this rise in your luteinizing hormone cannot be seen until four hours later it cannot be detected by the ovulation test kits until four hours later after you get up so if you are getting up at 6 a.m. and you decide to test at 7 a.m., you may not get, you may not be getting the most accurate results. You may see like low, negative, and then maybe when you test again in the afternoon, you see peak fertility, and then you are confused. So you want to wait until four hours after you wake up before you start testing. Another thing is to test at the same time every day because a woman's hormone can fluctuate our hormones can go from high to low and low to high or whatever but if you are testing at the same time every day then you can see a pattern you'll, you'll be getting an accurate result so don't test first thing in the morning and then test at the same time every day every day so if you start testing at 10 a.m today you do the same tomorrow you do the same the, the day after and by that you'll be able to track your fertility track your ovulation to your ovulation date and if you are doing all of these things the right way if, if you are not making any of these mistakes we we'll mentioned today then you may want to check your lifestyle your diet or maybe you have some underlying or fertility issues that needs to be seen by a doctor to be treated but uh, if you are if you are confused about some things about your ovulation then these are the mistakes that you want to look into are you making any of these if you are then you know what to do so that will be it for today's video i really do hope that you guys found this helpful i hope that you're able to track your ovulation the right way and conceive if you are trying to conceive or avoid pregnancy if you are trying to avoid please share this video with anyone around you any lady your lady friends your girlfriends uh subscribe to my channel if, if you are new here and if you found this helpful and please give this video a thumbs up i would really appreciate that thank you guys for watching i'll see you in my next one